We are thrilled to have Prune with us today to answer a few questions for us. Prune? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us. I want to start out by asking you, how is your health today? How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I could have slept a bit more hours, but I'm great. What about you? <laughs> All of us. I could have too. <laughs> well, I want to talk to you a little bit about your latest work, the Amazon, which hopefully we'll have up on the screen shortly. This is really an expression of the journey, your breast cancer journey that you're going through right now. In your film, there's a moment where you talk about the first time after surgery, you're in your hospital room, you walk into your bathroom and you see yourself in the mirror and you got very emotional about what you saw and what it meant to you. How did you get from there to creating the Amazon? I think I needed proaction. As a sculptor, I felt through reconstruction that I was becoming the sculpture. <laughs> And that sculpture, the Amazon, was a way for me to get back to being the sculptor. I was feeling a bit, you know, like a patient. You have to be patient. Even when you can walk to the surgical room, they're going to roll you on a gurney. And I needed that proaction. The, the movie helped me to do that by, you know, saying action to myself in the corridors of the hospital. I was getting back into the choice of my life. But the sculpture, I think, was a very important key moment for me because it, it became my catharsis. That rite of passage, and I, I, I think rituals are important when you're ill to celebrate every different steps. And at the end of the treatments, I decided to create this sculpture like a celebration. Why an Amazon? So Amazons uh, are a tribe of women that uh, are warriors. And the mythology says that they were cutting their breasts to be better with their bow and arrow. And I decided to do my own. I felt in love with one I saw at the Met, a life size, and I did my own version of it. And the idea was to transport it like a journey, like to symbolize the cancer journey on the river, the Hudson River which I did on a barge, that was my dream, until a place where I invited all my family and friends to come for a celebration, a performance, where I cut her breasts to symbolize the fact I was becoming a sculptor again. And also, I asked all my family to light. She's recovered of incense sticks. We don't see it here, but she, half of her body is recovered of incense sticks, like acupuncture needles, which were, that technique was a real pillar for me. Um, throughout the treatment, because, for example, as a patient, uh, you know, you have so many side effects when you go through chemo. And if you use acupuncture at the end of your fingers, you protect your nerves. And as a sculptor, I didn't want to lose the sensation at the end of my fingers. So acupuncture really helped me. And I decided to recover that sculpture with thousands of incense sticks symbolizing uh, acupuncture needles, mm. and all my family and friends littered all of them. One of the themes in your documentary is about how your life seemed to imitate your art. You know, you had an interest in anatomy and an interest in acupuncture well before your diagnosis. How did you see all of that coming full circle? And then, as you said, through the Amazon, having your art then be your catharsis? for what, was, what was, you were going through with your breast cancer? I didn't know I would do a movie about it, in a way. It was very hard to me to decide to turn the camera towards myself, because until then, there was kind of a distance with all my projects. I was working, I thought, like a kind of anthropologist. And suddenly, you know, it's like life had pointed its fingers to the inside of my body to tell me, OK, now this is where you should look. So I did the movie for that, but also because going through the treatments, it was incredible. So many serendipity, so many crazy links with all the past projects I had done before. To give you an example, one of my first sculptures was a breast udder. Then during a performance called the Procreative Dinner between art, science, and gastronomy, where I follow all the steps of assisted procreation from the sperm bar to the delivery of the baby, 
which is a reflection on eugenism, on designer babies, the new technologies today to create your own uh, type of baby. So, you know, I, at the end of the dinner, served my breasts. I served even, I molded my nipple at the time and, and served it in almond paste without knowing that one day I would still have the mold, but I won't have the nipple anymore. Wow. And another thing, for example, is that at the end of reconstruction, I have my surgeon who comes to me where I worked 10 years ago in India to do sculptures, hybrid between the holy cow, Indian holy cow and the daughter to um, highlight the issue, the paradox that uh, holy cow are sacred because they are a symbol of fertility, but no one wants the girl, even if they are a vector of fertility and would be mothers one day. So I did hybrids between both that I you know, put in the street, abandoned in the street, and I documented people's reaction. I even did a giant one that I put back in, pushed back into the river, Genji. And suddenly, I'm in front of my surgeon, and he's telling me, oh, by the way, we have that new technique that I want to propose you. I think it would be great for you. So it's to graft some cow fetus skin on your breast. So he was right away proposing me, you know, to make me the hybrid, suddenly. So I said no. <laughs> And now we can see why you called your film Serendipity. The Amazon, of course, is a warrior. What message do you hope that she has for other women like yourself who've been diagnosed with breast cancer? So another serendipity is like, I made 108 warriors before knowing that I would become one because I created like a year before the Amazon and a year before my cancer, uh, a giant army in China that I buried in a s secret place until 2030. I will dig it up with archaeologists. There are 108 life-size sculptures of little girls uh, mixed with the soldiers, the thousand years old soldiers. And suddenly I buried them in China uh, thinking I'm gonna dig them up in 2030 and I hear about my cancer and I'm confronted to my own death and I'm thinking, will I be there in 2030? So. I become that warrior, I decide to create the Amazon warrior to give it to all women warrior in that help, in that hope that at some point that sculpture will go in a hospital or an institution and that woman will be able to come and lit, light the incense as a symbolic and as a cathartic gesture for themselves like it was for me. Prune, thank you so much for sharing your journey. Thank you, Alice. Sharing your vision. And I encourage everyone, I encourage everyone if you have a chance to see her documentary, Serendipity, which launches tomorrow here in New York. Excellent. I would highly encourage you to see it.